What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denaric Wolf, and welcome to something a little different this time. This is the political compass test, and as it says in the name, this is a test that'll determine where you are on the political compass. And it's going to give me a whole bunch of questions here, and I have to answer, do I strongly agree or disagree or somewhere in between? And uh, it's going to take my answers together, and it's going to determine where I am on a political compass. So for those who are unaware, on a political compass, you would have the left, the center, and the right. Okay, some left, left-wing left ideologies would include stuff such as socialism, communism, uh, I don't know, multiculturalism, th those sort of things. On the right, you would have stuff such as nationalism, uh, open market economies, um, fascism on the far right, I guess. And in the center, you're, you're kind of mixed between the two. You're, you're moderate, as it's known, the people who are in the center of a political compass. And before I even taken this test, I would guess I'm somewhere around the center. Uh, because throughout my life, I've kind of been, I don't know, I've kind of been both left-wing and right-wing, really. So I, yeah, I pulled in Italy in, in my life. I've been a left winger and a right winger at the same time. So, uh, and and recently in my life, somehow both of those political ideologies in me have kind of blended together, and I'm I would consider myself a centrist. So now I don't know if I'm center right or center left. It is up to this test to determine, but we'll see. So anyway, let's just get right into this. Uh, before taking the test, please note that this isn't a survey. These are in questions. The propositions to question the logic of individual ones that irritate you is to miss the point. What? I don't know. Uh, some propositions are extreme, some are moderate. That's how we can show you whether you lean towards extremism or moderation on the compass. Your responses should not be overthought. Uh, I'll try. Some of them are intentionally vague. Their purpose is to trigger reactions in the mind, measuring feelings and prejudices rather than detailed opinions on policy. I feel like uh, politics should be based on detailed opinions on policy you, you like, and not just you like that policy because you feel it's good. We'll see in the test. Okay. Uh, just a few propositions to start with concerning no less how you see the country and the world. By the way, if, if any, any of you want to do this uh, test for yourself, it's just politicalcompass.org forward slash uh, test. Okay, here we go. If economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. Okay, I agree. But like I... If economic... It should primarily serve humanity. Of course, it should serve humanity. What else should it serve? Interests of transnational corporations. Well, technically, transnational corporations are just humans. So, yeah, I guess I would agree with that. Yeah. I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong. I disagree there. If my country is wrong, I'll just say it's it's wrong. So... No, I'm not a crazy, uh, mindless patriot. I'll I'll say when my country does something bad or good. And every country has good and bad. So, yeah, I would disagree. Okay. No one chooses their country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't think you should uh, simply be proud of your country just because you come from there i think you should be proud that your country like works really hard to improve the citizens standard of living has a very good track record with uh, you know human rights th those sort of things a, a country that doesn't suck basically so yeah i agree our race has many superior qualities compared with other races sorry what our 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 race like the human race has superior qualities. Uh, the, yeah, the human race definitely is superior to other animals. We are, the, after all, the most intelligent animal. So, but what does it mean, our race? You mean my race has many superior qualities? What do you mean by race? Uh, here's me overthinking it. 
Uh, I'm going to assume this is trying to brand me as a racist. So the white race, because I am white, has many superior qualities compared with other races. No, 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 no. Strongly dis disagree there. Uh, the color of our skin, which is really just determined by melanin, uh, nothing superior, you know, about any race, really. Many superior qualities? What? I think it's just trying to brand me as a racist, really. So if I was to strongly agree, oh, it would be like, ah, oh, yeah, you're a, a supremacist of sorts. But no, I don't think any race has anything superior compared to other races. It's just a, a different color of an external organ. That's all skin is. It's, it's an external organ. So, eh. The enemy of my enemy is my friend disagree sometimes this is true but sometimes the enemy of my enemy is also my my enemy military action that defies international law is sometimes justified um yeah yeah i would agree because well, let me tell you about the un and their their military uh, a lot of times they don't even have the right to shoot at the opposing side so what if they're coming to, like, massacre an innocent group of people and, and they don't have really the right or the law to shoot the opposing side? I would honestly just defy international law and just start shooting at them. So it doesn't matter if I'm not allowed to shoot or not. I'm, I would prefer saving people's lives instead. So, yeah, go ahead, defy the international law and, you know, take action. There's now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. Information entertainment. Um, well, a lot of YouTube channels are informational, but they're also, well, entertaining. So, hmm, I don't know what it, I don't know what this means. <laughs> Some are intentionally vague. Now I see what they mean by an intentionally vague. Right, fusion of information entertainment. Uh, I, I think that's. I disagree, but um, this is a very vague question. Does it mean like satire? Because satire is technically information and entertainment like, uh, I don't know, J James Oliver, for example. Yeah, sure, he's informational. He's also entertaining at the same time. It's satire. Why would it worry me? I don't know. That, that question, that is vague. <laughs> so let's just go to the next page. Now, the economy, you fools. We're talking attitudes here, not the FTSE index. FTSE, what is an FTSE index? <laughs> Sorry, let me just search Google. Oh, Financial Times Stock Exchange. All right, all right, all right. Okay, gotcha. People are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality. Ew, strongly disagree there. And World War One and World War Two prove that point. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. <sighs> but the thing about high inflation, it also causes high unemployment and makes the money basically useless. So it's very important to control the inflation, of course. Uh, I, I'd like to think long term instead of short term. And I think, uh, I think unemployment, of course, is bad, but... If the inflation is bad, then the unemployment is going to be bad as well. So I will agree on that one. Like hyperinflation can just destroy lives. So that's bad. So I will I will agree. Yeah, control. You, we need to control the inflation. I don't see how me controlling the inflation is going to cause unemployment. But I'm not I'm not an economist, so I'll just go with my gut feeling and agree there. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. Okay, I agree on that one, definitely. I don't know if I strongly agree on that one because sometimes voluntarily, oh, it says voluntarily protect. Because sometimes corporations can protect the environment. For example, uh, if you're making solar panels, you know, technically you're protecting the environment in a sense because you're providing uh, a renewable source of energy. But to voluntarily protect them? No, no, no. I, I have high doubts about that one. I strongly agree that they need regulation. Okay. 
from each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. I think Karl Marx said this, but I don't know what it means, so I'm just going to... From each according to his ability is a slogan popular... Yeah, Karl Marx, critique of God the program. The principle refers to free access to and distribution of goods, capital, and services. So basically divide every... I will just disagree with that one. But I'm very conflicted there. Because I believe in distribution. That, that is important. I don't believe you should distribute everything evenly in, in a uh, factory, for example. So um, I do believe that, you know, the CEO, if he was a, you know, not a corrupt man, and if he was a, he started the uh, factory um, all by himself. He took the risk. He he's the one who made the business plan and everything. I think yeah, he should definitely be paid more than the rest of the workers. Even though I think I don't think he should be paid five hundred times more. You know, but just paid more. I, I like distribution, but not like you know crazy communist distribution. So I'll just disagree. The freer the market, the freer the people. I will agree with that one not too much of a free market where there's no regulations because then you're gonna create a bunch of monopolies you know and if you have a monopoly then the people are definitely not free but i definitely do believe in the free market with a bit of regulation here and there so i will agree it's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now bottled branded consumer product why is that sad sad bottled it's trying to tell me uh, like uh, bottled water, you know, should be free for everyone. Like water should be, you know, a human right, basically. But bottled water, um, y they do know you need to create the bottles. You need to create a factory that creates bottles. Then you got to fill the bottles. Then you got to distribute the bottles. And those bottles are very useless because, I don't know, you can't really carry. Can't really, if you're going hiking on a mountain, for example, you need to bring some water. You can't, you, I highly doubt you're just going to find a random source here and there. So it's a sad reflection. Now, disagree. It just, it just is what it is. Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. Uh, disagree there. Um, what's the other option? Land should be a commodity to be bought and sold. So land is should basically be for everyone, a free-for-all. I don't know. Then in that case, the ones with the most weapons would have the most most land because they can hold on to it easier. So I don't know. Buying and selling land just for me, that's just a normal way of living. You know, of course, land should be bought and sold, uh, should be uh, properly distributed. Like this should be an industrial zone here. Uh, this should be a, uh, you know, a place for people's houses over here. There should be a place for uh, shops here. You know, it should be distributed in, in that sense, but it sh should still be bought, of course. And it's not that there's l not enough land to go around. Come on. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. Contribute nothing to their society. I have a feeling that this... Uh, this test was written by left-wingers. I'm just going to call it out now. Left-wingers definitely wrote this. This all sounds very, like, communist-y. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who manipulate money. Yeah, that's how you make money. More, that's how you make more money, by manipulating the money. Contribute nothing to their society. Well, if they're manipulating money and they're paying their taxes, uh, they're contributing to society. In a, Yeah. In a sense, many personal. F if he's making it, you know, through corrupt means, uh, of course, I would agree with that. That that's very sad and regrettable. But if he's making it, you know, if he's just, you know, thought of a good business plan, he's manipulating the money. No, that's his money. I don't, I don't know what what is trying to tell me there. Yeah, yeah. Someone who manipulates money. Why is that regrettable? He can do what he wants. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. I will agree, but only in, in, in instances of national security. Protectionism could be used for national security in a sense. Other than that, no, no, I don't think it's necessary in trade. Only for national security purposes. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. 
the only social responsibility. Let's take out the social. It would be the only responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. I mean, uh, responsibility, it should pay its taxes. Uh, it should pay its employees a reasonable sum. The only social response, no, 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 no. That doesn't make sense Th to only its shareholders. And a company is meant to do other things as well. Yeah, it needs to pay its taxes, it needs to pay its employees. Not just, you know, everything to the shareholders and screw everyone else. The rich are too highly taxed. Oh, strongly disagree. <laughs> well, if you're in uh, in Europe, it, this depends really where you are for this question. Uh, since I'm in Bosnia, I will disagree. I'll still strongly disagree there because, let's be honest, there are tax havens out there that the rich can use and everything to really avoid being taxed. But uh, here's the thing: Does anybody? in this world really need a hundred billion dollars i mean come on imagine if you would were to just get taxed for like 10 billion of those dollars i mean that would that would mean a lot it would mean nothing to them but it would mean a lot to society you know what i mean so if the so i would say they're not paying enough <laughs> honestly i know there are some rich people in bosnia as well they're they're crazy rich so but even the rich don't even pay that much in Bosnia because Bosnia has a pretty low tax rate. So I would prefer increasing the tax rate a bit so people can get better access to you know health care and, and whatnot. So that would mean healthier employees, which would mean more profits to the business. Okay? Those with the uh, ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Well, those who can pay do have higher standards of medical care because... In Bosnia, for example, some doctors who need to do a transplant of an organ simply don't exist. We don't have those doctors. Uh, so they would have to go find a private doctor a private doctor somewhere abroad, and usually it would cost money. So those who do have the ability to pay have higher standards of medical care. That is a true statement of society because medical care is, you know, here's me overthinking it already. <laughs> Because medical care is not a given, you know, like, it's very difficult to train doctors and specialists in smaller countries where I am and keep them in the country and not go anywhere else, you know. But everybody should have high standards of medical care. It's not just the rich should have higher standards. But there's always private care that the you know rich can use, so, and other people can use. So I definitely think health care, for the most part, should be a public thing for everyone. Everyone deserves a chance to live, you know. Government should penalize businesses that mislead the public. Definitely agree on that one. Or, like, strongly agree. If they mislead the public, you know, if they get me to buy something that I... Well, I guess they do that all the time. <laughs> get me to buy something that I didn't ever need. They technically misled me. But if they're, like, tricking the people, if they're buying into uh, a, a, fic a fictional business, business that doesn't exist yet and they're investing bonds into the business you know they're misleading the public and that's something very illegal so it's already penalizable so i will strongly agree on that one um since mislead could also mean you know like get you to buy something that you don't need but we do that all the time anyway i mean i bought some earbuds recently or uh, wireless headphones i should say uh so i'll just agree I mean, if they're misleading them in a, such a bad way, I would strongly disagree. But technically, they didn't do anything wrong by getting me to buy something that I didn't really need. So that's just they get you to buy stuff that you want instead of what you need. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at agree. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Hell no, I'm, I'm strongly against monopolies. Hmm. Well, some people would argue to me, oh, but government is a monopoly. Well, kind of. Well, if it's not a federated government, if it's a unitary government, uh, yeah, kind of a monopoly. But I, I generally disagree with monopolies because imagine a monopoly on electricity appears in a super free market and there's only one seller of electricity, you know, that isn't the government, for example. If, if stuff like that would happen, uh, phew, they would hold so much power over people. That would be 
as powerful as governments, basically. So I would strongly disagree on monopolies are generally a bad thing. Or duolopolies, monopsonies, whatever. Some of my personal social values. Abortion when the woman's life is not threatened should always be illegal. Should always be illegal? Um, I disagree. There are instances where uh, you know, a woman's life would get ruined by that happening. Though They should be more careful, obviously. And besides, there's always going to be an underground business regarding to abortion anyway. So, yeah, I'll disagree on that one. All authority should be questioned. Strongly disagree on that one. An eye for an eye and a two for, tooth for a tooth. I know what this means, but what does all this mean? Hang on. Uh, it refers to the belief that retaliation in kind is the appropriate way to deal with an offense or a crime. Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Okay. I know what eye for an eye means. That means like getting revenge. I, don't, I definitely would disagree. It's not always the best course of action. And revenge could cause an infinite loop of violence, really. So you'll get revenge on them. They'll get revenge on you. You'll get revenge on them again. They'll get revenge on you again, etc. Uh, that's why it, it, it says in a lot of holy books, for, forgive and forget, you know. Sometimes that's the best course of action. Eh, sometimes, you know. But there's no, like, middle ground here. I have to either agree or disagree, but I'll just leave it at that. Taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. Theaters or museums. Well, in order for them to survive on a commercial basis, they would have to, you know, pay entry fees. And I, I would prefer if people learned more about a country, you know, because museums and theaters are, are pretty important parts of, uh, of a culture of a certain country. So uh, I would prefer as many people can who can afford to go there, go there, you know, if it's free for people to uh, enter the museum, more people will go there and more people will learn about uh, the country. So I generally think museums are should be there always. So we know about our past. But I guess I would agree that they should not be expected to prop up any theaters. That cannot survive on a bit. Uh yeah, I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Schools should it's kind of a vague question, to be honest. Schools should not make classroom attendance uh compulsory. I would I would disagree with that one. Uh, compulsory education has proven to be very effective throughout history. Uh, ever since the Prussians, I believe, were the first ones to uh, cause imp imp compulsory uh, schooling. They were the first ones. It's proven very effective for their society, so I'll, I'll disagree on that one. All people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. Different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. Hmm. That's another vague question. You mean like every nationality to keep, should keep to themselves? Every all the or like subcultures? Every nerd or every jock should keep to themselves? I disagree. I, I prefer that we learn off of each other because you always have something to learn from a different person. There's always something to learn. So, and there's something that they can learn from you as well. So. I'll just disagree with that one. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. I eh, disagree on that one. It's actually been proven that, that spanking your children or showing them violence or showing them violence in their childhood makes them more prone to violence later on. So I will disagree on that one. Do not hit children. There are other ways of getting them to do what you want to do. It's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. Yeah, I, I guess I agree. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll disagree on that one. It depends on how strong the marijuana is. <laughs> Here's me overthinking it. Most marijuana is, you know, just, eh, not that big of a deal. But some marijuana has like 80 or 90% THC in it, and that's like very, very strong for nowadays standards. So I will disagree on the very strong one. For the weak one, yeah, go ahead. Do what you want. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. Yeah, yeah, I'll strongly agree on that one. Definitely. Focus on the jobs first. 
Because if they want to follow their passion, you know, that's fine. But usually they'll need money to follow their passions. So definitely where I live, at least. This, if I'm qu phrasing this in Bosnia, I would strongly agree. Because our schooling system was just so crap. Did not equip us for anything, really. To find jobs, n neither to find jobs nor our passions. So I'm going to strongly agree with that one. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Uh, well, disagree because, well, one, with new scientific and genetic research, we can uh, stop those inherit inheritable disabilities and uh, we can do some research on them, figure out how to, you know, if somebody gets born with an inheritable disease, how to stop it in the future and that way we can advance medical sciences at the same time does that make any sense no okay well <laughs> i'm just gonna pass uh, skip to the next question then the most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline disagree because there are many other things they should learn not just discipline you know Discipline is like following the rules, but I said I should def definitely I would definitely think they should uh, also learn to follow their passions from an early childhood. So, yeah, there's many, many things other than discipline. They should learn morals for one thing. So I'll disagree on that one. There are no savage and civilized peoples. There are only different cultures and eh, disagree on that one because some cultures are well, some cultures are cannibalistic. So. Yeah, disagree. Those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society's report or <laughs> report support. Um, uh, to phrase this question is, is again trying to make call me out as a racist, but some some people are really savage. But like I said, cannibalistic people, people who do ritual sacrifices. There are still those societies out there, so. I will disagree on that one. Uh, those who are able to work in reason should not be, should not expect society's support. Support as in like I should uh, support him for uh, unemployment? Like, yeah, I'll agree. If, if they're uh, healthy and able, you know, they were given the job, but they just didn't take the job. You know, that's on them. No big deal. I don't care. Do what you want, dude. Uh, but I, I definitely would not want to p pay your uh, unemployment wages, so. Or pay your welfare. So I'll, I'll agree on that one. Unless you have a horrible disability, then I guess it's not your fault. Uh, when you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll generally agree with that. Um, whenever I'm troubled with something, I honestly just... Try to keep calm and carry on, basically. So I'll agree. First-generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. I'll disagree because first-generation would assume, you know, uh, people coming over for the first time and taking their children with them. If they're, if they're very young children and they grow up in that society, they can indeed become fully integrated in that society. Even the parents, really, if they're really loved the the country they uh, em immigrated to they always dreamt of coming to that country i definitely think they can be integrated into that country but yes i understand some first generation immigrants don't integrate with their country but yes it's definitely possible uh, what's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us uh no What's good for successful corporations? You know what would be good for a successful corporations? Well, if they uh, paid their employees less. Think of that. So the, the corporation is going to have more profit because less is going to the employees. But that that is ultimately not good for all of us because the employees are paid less. So, yeah, I would, I would disagree on that one. No broadcasting institution, however independent its, co its content should receive public funding. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, news should deliver proper news. And if they don't survive, you know, if the fake news companies can't survive without public funding, eh, I don't care. They can go defunct for all I care. So, yeah. Page four out of six. How you see the wider society. Okay. Our civil liberties are being ex excessively curbed 
in the name of counterterrorism. Um, well, that depends on the country you live in. But yeah, there are they are, governments are mostly following you more and more, more and more. You know, even on the internet, for example, they're following what you do. In, in the name of you know counterterrorism, in the sense that you know they might catch a terrorist, I guess, on the internet. So definitely, in a sense, our civil liberties are being curbed. So they're spying on us more. So I will agree on that one. But of course, counterterrorism is a good thing. So a significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. I, I would strongly disagree on that one. Oh, boy. Because a one-party state can... Uh, can delay can delay progress in the name of you know enriching the one party. They don't even care about progress. They just care about progress for themselves. So no 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 no. I, I strongly disagree on that one. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. I, I agree on that one. Okay, the death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. Well. I'll disagree on that one. I generally think people should have a right to life. And I know some people would say, oh, the most serious crimes, genocide or something. Well, the thing is, if we just straight up just kill that guy, then we'll never learn what went through his head. See, I don't want to kill that person. I want to learn what went through that person's mind. And if we just straight up kill the person, we'll never learn what makes that person do such a heinous crime. So in, in a sense, we can study on them and, and, and maybe prevent something like that from happening in the future by understanding more what makes a person do that heinous crime. So if someone, I don't know, kills a person and uh, we kill the person who killed the person, you know, or somebody who did a mass murder, for example, killed 20 people, I definitely, we should definitely, you know, find out more. It, it should it gives us insight more on a human's psyche and generally uh, generally the death penalty I would, I'm just against it and here in Europe it doesn't really exist so I'll disagree but I think it's probably best that we study them and lock them up for good but that's a different story but death penalty now in a civilized society one must always have people above to be obeyed and the people below to be commanded. Um, disagree. The people above can be, you know, loved and followed. They don't have to be obeyed. That, that would imply like you have to follow them no matter what. And the people below to be commanded. Or they could be the followers. You know, they don't, you don't have to give them commands all the, all the time. So they should work together. People above and below. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. Yeah, I strongly disagree on that one. Modern art is just blah. In criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. Ooh, disagree on that one. Because sometimes there's no rehabilitating a person. Like, they're just too far gone. They're too far gone into psychosis. There's... No way he's, you're going to re rehabilitate him and put him back into society with the medical technology that we have nowadays. With the mental health medical technology that we have nowadays. But here in Europe, rehabilitation has been proven to work quite well. So the reincarceration rate, you know, in the United States after someone leaves, you know, jail is upwards of like 60 to 70 percent. A very high chance they're just going to commit a crime again. But here in Europe, where we do a lot of rehabilitation, try to become, not treat them like animals, have them become part of our society, you know, part of, part of life. Their reincarceration rate is only 20% in Europe. So Europe is, I would say, yeah, is doing something better in that sense. Help them become a part of society instead of just you know, treating them like animals. Like they were probably treated all their lives, so... It is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. I'll agree. Some criminals are just way too far gone. And there's no hope. Uh, the business person and the manufacturer are, the, are more important than the writer and the artist. Hmm. I'll disagree because some writers and artists were phew, just so important for human development. Like uh, the writers of the 
of the Enlightenment that really changed the way we live our lives and increased manufact helped increase manufacturing in a sense because they brought on enlightenment. So some writers and artists, you know, what would life be without writing and, and art? That's just, I'll disagree. Though manufacturing business is obviously important as well. Mothers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. Ooh. Mothers may have careers, but the first duty is to be homemakers. I mean... They could both work together to take care of the house and both have careers. So uh, I'll disagree on that one. Like, she can do the dishes one time and I can do the dishes one time. Whatever, you know, for example, like that. It's not that they should be homemakers, but first and foremost, then with careers. How about both the husband and wife should uh, take care of the homes and both can have careers, you know? It's possible nowadays, so... Just t take care of the house together. Not that big of a deal. Not, it's not that hard to vacuum the floor. Just come on. Uh, multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. Uh, I don't understand. Unethically exploiting developing countries? I don't know. This plant genetic. <sighs> exploiting the resources of developing countries. Okay, <sighs> Let me rephrase that. Multinational... Okay. That, that is so vague. <laughs> With the way they put it. Unethically exploit... Yes. Yes. I'll definitely... That definitely does go on. In the dark. Uh, making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. Making a peace with the established. Oh, that is just so vague. Making peace with the establishment? No, some, sometimes the establishment is just too far gone. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm mature just because I accept them for what they are. Sheesh. Okay, five out of six. If you got through this, okay, you'll find these propositions on religion. A breeze. Astrology accurately explains... Uh, many things, no, no. Uh, the positions of stars really don't don't matter. They don't affect your life at all. As a matter of fact, just while we're on astrologies, you know, when you're looking at a constellation, I don't know, the star here, star there, star there, so, and it makes a, a shape of something that looks like something. Okay, from our perspective, if you were to go to a different part of the galaxy and look at that same constellation, you would notice that it looks completely different because you're looking at the stars in a different way. So I think astrology is, you know, fun. I'm I'm a Leo, by the way, in astrology. So uh, fun in a way, like we can label ourselves like that. It's just it's just, it's just a fun thing, but it does not explain really anything. So you cannot be moral without being religious. <laughs> Strongly disagree on that one. So charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. Charity is better. Charity is important, but I think first and foremost, social security should take care of the disadvantaged. So I disagree on that one. Some people are naturally unlucky. What do you mean? You mean like some... Naturally? You mean like they were born with a disability? In that sense, of course, that makes... But if it's trying to tell me some people are... Just, just have... Un, for some reason are unlucky all the time. That's just a coincidence, you know? That's not because there's a, a, a gray cloud following them over their heads all the time. So, pff, disagree on that one. It is important that my child's school inst instills religious uh, values. Disagree because some religious values are have no place in modern society. Uh, well, other, you can cherry-pick religions and you can find good things about the religion but generally over here when i'm talking i'm talking about western religions christianity and islam because i know those two religions the best when it, when it comes to their values yes yeah, some of them are just psychopathic yeah some of them are good if you can cherry pick them so disagree in the terms of religious values they should learn about religions i'm not sure that it should instill religious values i'll just leave it at that and final page
Finally, a look at sex. Okay, sex outside of marriage is usually, I like how they put usually immoral. Disagree. What? The person could have been in a, you know, a relationship with one person they broke up. And then they found the right person and they got married, but they already had, you know, sex before marriage. I I don't see how why why that make why would that would make them wicked or immoral. Oh, I'll just disagree on that one. A same sex couple in a stable loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Um stable loving relationship. They should also be stable financially if they should be take a well a lot of children end up not getting adopted ever which is the sad part and if there there happens to be a couple that want to take care of the takes care of the child send them to college you know that would help society in a sense so yeah they should they should i think that's fine i don't think i don't think they're going to teach that person to be you know a homosexual they're of course going to teach them to do what makes them happy i don't think you know, same-sex couples are necessarily just evil by nature. They can be people. They're just people at the end of the day. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. I agree. I don't think I should be restricting it for whatever sense. Uh, depicting consenting, yeah, that's fine. Should be legal. Normally, I'm not for things to be, be illegal. Because, first of all, they're just going to go... This is just going to go on the black market. So people are still going to find a way to get it anyway. So just make it legal. So there's not going to be any shady stuff going on. And it's depicting consenting adults. So yeah, I agree. Uh, What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Yes. What goes on in a private... Well, unless they're making crack and meth in their private bedroom and they're... (laughs) It's meaning to imply, yeah, sex, of course. That's none of your business. Really, why should that be the business of the state? No one can feel naturally homosexual. Homosexuality did my research and it's proven to be a natural thing. So no one, let, hang on, let me re- reread that so I make sure I'm answering this correctly. No one can feel naturally homosexual. Uh, it's proven to be natural. It's trying to, I guess it's trying to depict me as some sort of homophobe. But no, they're just, it's proven by nature, by their genetics. It's the way they are. Uh, these days, openness about sex has gone too far. I don't know, openness has gone too, too far. I definitely think we're more open in a lot of societies. I don't know if it's gone too far. I'll disagree with that one. Okay, let's see where I stand. Dun, 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 where am I? Where am I? Okay, wait, let's see this one. Okay, here, here's an example. Authoritarian, libertarian. T- this is when it comes to... Um, there's the economic scale and right here, the social scale. Libertarian, authoritarian. Okay? You don't want the the uh, government to have any say in your life and or authoritarian. You want the government to be everywhere in, a pr- in people's lives. And left and right on... The economic scale, and we we have some examples here of different countries. Wow, Singapore, despite being very authoritarian and very right wing, has been very successful. I must say, very right. Well, Switzerland as well, but okay. So anyway, uh, okay. I don't think that's important. Okay, where am I? Oh, I am. Oh, I'm almost at the center. Like I said, I guess I'm, I am more libertarian. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Like I said, I thought center left, maybe a little bit, but as we, as I just proved with this test, yeah, I'm a very centrist person in terms of either left or right in the economy, but I would definitely be more libertarian. So it, I think this test defined me perfectly. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, that was that was interesting. Uh, if any of you want to do take this test uh, yourselves or learn more about you know the politics or whatnot, uh, you can go to the website politicalcompass.org and uh, check it out. But anyway, I think I'll leave this off right here. I think I've confirmed I'm basically a centrist libertarian person, and uh, yeah, 
Uh, I think I'll end it off here. Thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.